Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Okay, let's do a recap of week 12 of the marathon train so far. Week 12 took place from the 31st of July to the 6th of August, and it's also the first week of the race preparation train block. So the race preparation train block goes for four weeks. Even though the weeks are still fairly high mileage, there's like fewer aerobic runs and medium long runs throughout the weeks since it'll be centered a bit more around like tune-up races so the tune-up races are there to help provide some feedback and benchmark on my current level of fitness preparing for racing which includes like the mental demands and focus and also the pre-race routine which includes like sleep and like warm-up and also reduce a bit of anxiety from not racing at all lead up to the marathon so Monday is a bit of rest a bit of walking it's also where I do my strength work as I always say in these videos I often say I do these on Monday but I also do a bit of it throughout the week as well especially on like recovery days I guess Tuesday was some intervals it was supposed to be 14k's of running in total so this was like 5 by 600 meter intervals at around 5k race pace with around 90 seconds of jog recovery in between each interval rep I just did like a 5.5k warm up to the river walk which is where I always do my intervals I guess then I did the intervals itself I don't think I've ever done 600 meter intervals before that day and yeah it was kind of peculiar but went fairly well overall then I did like a four and a half K cooldown and that adds up to like 14 Ks I guess Wednesday was a 23 K medium long run just did that Sydney Park in the morning um went fairly well pretty steady throughout Thursday was a double recovery the morning was 10 K recovery with six strides at the end I uh, did that Salt Pan Creek so a bit of trails felt pretty decent got back did the strides at Riz Park went fairly well overall and then the evening run was a 6k recovery I did it a bit late again this time around 6 20 p.m I'd much rather do like around 5 30 to 6 p.m i guess so it was kind of dark and i felt kind of sluggish that went okay but i think in the evening my sleep wasn't that great i went to bed at my normal time but like i woke up pretty early in the morning and then just couldn't get back to sleep i guess i think it's because i ate something weird that day friday was 8k recovery on grass i uh, did it in the morning went fairly well but i think towards the end i felt kind of weak it's probably because i didn't get enough sleep the night before and i think i was developing some allergies or something or like a cold like i was sneezing a bit throughout the day later on so saturday was my first tune-up race for this whole training program it was supposed to be anywhere between 8 to 15 k's i chose 10 k's like a week before it was the sydney striders 10k series at homebush i was aiming for anywhere between 35 30 and 36 30 i guess the race was set to start at around 7 a.m that day i wanted to get there a bit early like around 6 30 to 6 40 to get in some like warm up and then strides i guess but i kind of missed the early train so i had to like wait half an hour before the next train by the time i got there it was like around 6 50 a.m managed to get ready for the most part but i didn't get time to do some strides i guess then i got my bib line up for the race itself then i met mark and joe there um they're, they're, they're fellow runners who also watch this channel and yeah it was, it was kind of like a pleasant surprise to meet them at the start there because they recognized me somehow the course is very similar to the wentworth common park run so you start at Wentworth common you do that sort of like one kilometer loop around the block and then you go all the way out to the big road and then back to the Wetwell Common area and then back to the big road and then back where you fish in the Wetwell Common in the grass. It's a fairly simple course but like to me it's a bit tough because it's slightly hilly and it, it is a bit windy and narrow I guess because during the race yeah um people are running on both sides there's like three hairpin turns there so to me it wasn't a really particularly fast course I guess. I was also feeling a bit tired and weak that day I think the allergies became like a cold at this point. It felt quite humid that day compared to most days for the past few weeks not really sure it's probably because i was sick or something or i don't really know but yeah i was sweating a lot by the end of the race anyway so it was pretty fast out the gates uh maybe it was like a pack of like 10 people and i was just like hanging about there as well then it became like around seven people by two and a half k's and then like around the 4k mark it's just like four people it's just me and three others i guess at this point i was still feeling fairly solid so after about five and a half k's or so that's also around like the hairpin turn that you do to head back out again. My pace started falling behind a bit. I feel like top two guys held their pace really steadily, but I think I just started drifting behind. I could feel my pace slowly dropping towards like my threshold train pace. Something about having to redo that part of the course just, just mentally got me, I guess. So for the next two and a half Ks was mostly solo with the two people in front of me about 100 to 150 meters in front and also maybe the guys behind me around like the same distance I guess it's kind of tough to run solo and like yeah I was just starting to lose focus it wasn't until like the last one k or so where I started to hear like someone closing the gap behind me and I was like okay that kind of woke me up a bit and I started to kick back into like race pace again the guy held his pace really well and I think it overtook me like with around 500 meters to go and yeah I don't think I was willing to go like super anaerobic to catch up or anything so I just held my pace and yeah the guy who overtook me finished like a, a good 50 meters ahead of me so well done to him and I ended up finishing like fourth and crossing the line and then like around 36.22 I think which is like a massive PB for me personally I think my previous PB was like around 36.58 and that was like at the Sydney 10 event in May given that this time around I'm not really particularly training for 10k I'm not really even tapered for it and was like running on slightly tired legs with the course somewhat rough 
for me personally and maybe i wasn't in the best shape leading up to the race because i had like a slight cold or allergy and not the best sleep either for the past few days i think this race went fairly well overall there's a few interesting things to note as well i'm supposed to treat these two races like a proper race and all but like something about showing up in my training kit and like wearing my endorphin speed freeze which are like my training shoes for like intervals and tempo and like threshold workouts and also long runs or long runs and marathon pace efforts i feel like it didn't put me in the right state for racing it felt like i was treating it like a fast workout rather than a race if that makes sense and i think the only time i felt like i was actually racing was probably like the first 400 meters and the last 1k i guess when like the guy behind me was closing the gap i'll probably try wearing a dedicated racing kit or like racing shoe when it comes to races again and see how different the experience will be the other thing is I also kind of zoned out for a lot of the race as well especially after that turnaround point the five and a half k mark part of me thinks i lost focus and i wasn't really ready to repeat that section of the course i've done a bunch of times through my medium long runs and also i guess for like went with common park run and i usually don't turn around at that point i couldn't bring myself to mentally like push myself there i guess it was also hard to see the lead runners at that point like i know they were only like around 100 to 200 meters in front of me but like because the course is a bit windy at some points like you lose vision of them i guess that kind of like sets you back mentally a bit i think being unfamiliar with a course isn't really helpful but like being familiar with a course and also having previous experience or like expectations of it may affect your performance slightly in some way it could be good or bad i think i just have to overcome these things with just like racing experience i guess and then after the race i just stuck around for a while to have a chat with some of the fellow runners there caught up with mark and joe as well and then got some drinks and fruits as well at this time park run had already started i figured i might as well just join in to like get a bit more mileage for the day it was either that course went with common or roads park run i didn't feel like doing went with common right after this race so yeah end up end up deciding to do roads park run many thanks to mark who offered and gave me a lift to roads park run i ended up getting there at like around 8 35 and managed to finish the park run not too long before the tail walkers did so sunday was a 29k long run by this day i was feeling quite unwell it's probably because i pushed myself on saturday a bit too much anyways i knew i could still do the long run for the most part but i just wasn't really into it i guess so i did my usual long run course started at marrickville went all the way to sydney park via the cooks river cycleway and then cutting through homebush and then for the last 9k or so i just did it like around the brick pit ring walk where the roads runners crew was like doing a brick pit challenge and also like fundraising for one of the fellow runners who was in like a pretty serious accident and like was going through recovery i got there kind of late and there were still many runners doing the laps there big shout out and well done to them it's not mentally easy to do like those loops around that brick pit but together they smashed it i didn't stick around at the end there because i just wanted to get home asap and like get, get some good rest i guess so yeah managed to hold it together and finish long run in one piece before the fatigue finally caught up later in the day i guess that brings the total mileage for the week to like around 109 kilometers a bit different than what i'm used to usually because there's like there's like less aerobic runs and less medium long runs and most of the week was building up towards like the tune-up race the upcoming sunday is also going to be the city to surf event in sydney it's going to be my first time doing the city to surf which is going to be exciting however i'm supposed to be doing like a pretty big workout that day it's supposed to be a 29k long run with 23ks at marathon pace effort so this is like the biggest marathon pace run of my whole training program and it's also one of the last ones i have to do before the actual marathon race itself seems like a pretty important workout but i think i'd rather just enjoy the city surf event i guess and then maybe do a 15k run later in the day to make up for the mileage i'm not really sure i also don't really want to like squeeze in the long run before the city surf event starts and then like throughout the race i just like do like marathon pace I, i'd rather just go all out or, like treat like an actual race i guess yeah i'm a bit conflicted what to do here but we'll have to see how it goes i guess so yeah this is the setup right now um i know it looks kind of awkward but like i'm already at the park doing this video so I might as well just record it here i normally do my foam rolling at home anyways what is foam rolling it's like a form of like self-massage for your muscles you pretty much just sit lie on or like roll on the foam roller i do it because it helps reduce like muscle tightness soreness inflammation it also increases like blood flow so i guess that helps reduce like recovery time foam rolling also helps like the mind and muscle connection so it's also helped me become a bit more aware of how certain muscle groups activate and also where i get more sore i guess i also heard it helps with increased like range of motion but i feel like doing foam rolling alone doesn't really help do that i guess like yes it does help relax the muscles and like loosen up a bit but like i feel like you gotta do like a lot of like, static stretching and mobility work to actually like lengthen your muscles properly if that makes sense but you can always do foam rolling first before you do like stretching or mobility work i guess since it does get the blood flowing you can technically foam roll anytime throughout the day but i like to do it in the evening right before i do my like light stretching and mobility work get the blood flowing because you don't really want to do like those kind of stuff like on like cold muscles i guess i heard it's pretty good to do before and like right after running as well i personally haven't really brought myself to do that just yet but yeah for now i still try pretty much every day in the evenings and that's been doing fairly well for me so far it takes me like around 10 50 minutes or even like less i guess yeah so what, what do you need well first it's good to have like a yoga mat preferably like a pretty wide yoga mat and mine's pretty narrow but yeah i, I, I really don't mind it's kind of old anyway and then a foam roller there's many types there's like really flat ones and then there's really like Spiky ones as well 
And then there's like short ones like my one and then there's also like really long ones as well. If you're sort of new to foam rolling, start with like the flatter ones and, and probably like longer ones if you can as well. So it's a bit more comfortable to like fit your body on I guess. The flatter ones are less harsh and then the spiky ones are like are way more firm I guess and that kind of digs, digs into your muscles a bit more. So how do I do the foam rolling? So there's two ways I like to do it. So the first one, if I'm not in a rush, I'll do the super slow rolling method. So that means I often just like sit on or lean on a muscle group for a bit first and then slowly roll over it. The second one is if I'm in a rush or something and I'm not really focused on the mood and that just means I roll over a muscle group like 10 times and just move on to the next part I guess. I personally feel like you'll get more benefits if you do it slowly but even if you do it somewhat fast I feel like you'll still get benefits anyway over not doing it at all. And the other main focus is to like stay relaxed and remember to like breathe naturally as you do the foam rolling. If you don't relax like your muscles tense up and then like that sort of creates a barrier between yourself and the foam roller and it, it makes the foam rolling a bit less effective and the other cool thing is you can adjust the intensity of the foam rolling by like controlling how much body weight is applied I guess with that being said let's get started this is the order I like to do my foam rolling but you, you guys can do whatever you want I guess first start with my glutes so I just sit in the foam roll for a while and like slowly roll over it if I don't have to like like at this speed I guess depending on how I feel right if it's tight I'll just like sit on it for a while if it's not tight I'll just move on I guess when I was talking about the fast one I was talking about like this you can still get pretty decent benefits doing this but like, if you're truly tight, you should probably just relax and like just slow down, I guess. Take it chill, you know? That's double glutes, both sides at once. And then I'll move on to one side, like one side of glute each, right? For me, the tight part is also the upper glute. So that's like closer to your back than your legs, if that makes sense. So then I'll just like lean back like this, and then roll with it slowly. You know, for, for about like 20 seconds or 30 seconds each or something. You can also like speed up by doing this. But just remember to relax, right? When you first do foam rolling, it's, it's so tough, like it, everything just hurts in a good way, I think. I don't, I don't know, but like, yeah. Over time, as you get looser or more flexible or like you do more mobility work or like you're less tight throughout the day, it doesn't really hurt as bad. Or maybe it's because my foam roll is kind of soft, I don't know. Like, I bought these foam rolls like nine years ago and like I think it's starting to be a bit soft, I guess. And I'll focus on like slightly lower glute. Remember, this is like leaning on one side. Remember to do both sides, yeah? And then while I'm in this position already, I, I just do like some of my hips as well, like the side parts. So just, just like fully lean over. You use like your legs and like your arms and your elbows to like support the weight as well and adjust like the intensity. So yeah, just slow roll over it. Relax, you know, and like see how you feel I guess. Like if it's tight, it's probably best to just sit there for a bit and then move on to the next part. Make sure you do both sides. And then after that's done, I'll move on to like the hamstring area, which is like around here. So I like to do both at once. So just like roll over it slowly, see how you feel. If it's not particularly tight, just move on, you know. You can do it a bit faster, like, you know, just do like this if you want. You can like spread your legs out a bit at the end, see there? Or like close it, get different angles and stuff, you know. One hamstring at a time, you know, like this. Make sure you do both sides ably. I normally skip this part of the legs because I feel like that's quite unnecessary. Like, you know, right behind the knees, it's mostly tendons. It's not, there's like almost no muscle there, I think. I don't really know. I personally avoid rolling behind my knees directly. So I just move straight to the calves. You can always start with two calves. Calves are like a very tight point, point for most people, so. Yeah, it, that's gonna be a tough one. <laughs> but yeah, like I, I prefer to do like one one calf at a time and just like lean on top of the other leg to get more pressure. Yeah, slowly, slowly. Like this. So I like to split up in this way, yeah? Like I have an upper calf, lower calf. So I do like side, middle, side, and move on to the upper part. Side, middle, side, like that. But that's just the way I like to like break it down in, in like different sections, I guess. So yeah. So like to speed up a bit, like, you know, this like this. In the past, my calves are like one of the tightest parts of my body, I think. It was always tight after running, walking or whatever, but like after foam rolling for so long now, it, it's mostly gone better, I think. But I think a lot of it is to do with like more mobility and strength work as well, because that helps loosen up your muscles in some ways as well. Do both sides, I guess. I normally go like this slowly and just like sit on it, but I have to look, oh, that's a tight part. Oh no, sit on it for a bit and then we move back and forth a tiny bit. 
and then I'll move on to the upper calves. Then I like to roll with the front of my shins. I don't really know what it's called, but yeah, just so you know, flip over. I don't know the best way to do this, but like I just like do like this, you know. I just like put my front of my shins on them. Not the bone itself, but the muscle, if that makes sense. I just like, you know, with my other hand, just, just help it guide it through. Because I know the front of the shins get pretty tight too. Maybe to do the other leg as well. If you find like a tight spot, maybe so just like lean it for a bit. At this point, I like to do my quads and also my hips as well. Because the quads are a very tight spot, like most runners, I guess, I do both at once before I move on to one leg and per side, I guess. Let's do both at once first. Just like ease yourself into it, I guess. Like that. You know. Don't go too far to your knees, just like stop right above your knees because that's where the quad ends, I guess. And like this tight, just hang there for a bit. Like that. You can also like move your legs out if you have to. Get different angles if you can. Close your legs, whatever. Let's move on to like one leg per side. So at this point, you can like focus more on the single leg. Move up all the way to the hips. That's usually a very tight spot for most people who sit a lot or like, you know, have an, I don't know, office job or, you know, that, it's, it's going to be typically tight for most people and it always feels pretty tough. Yeah, just move on over it slowly. Here's a tight spot, so I'm just, I'm just going to hang it for a bit. And then just stay relaxed and just like keep breathing as you would normally. Oh, that's a tight one. And go back and forth. Remember, you can adjust the intensity by like using your arms if you have to. The hip area where it connects to like your leg to your, to your stomach, whatever, that's always gonna be tight. So, yeah, you'll, you'll feel great afterwards, <laughs> hopefully. Remember to lean left and right to get different angles. And of course, like repeat on the other side, right? So, like that. So, with my leg here and my arm here, it's reducing a lot of the weight load on my quad right now. If I was just like, you know, put my leg up, it's gonna be a bit heavier, I guess, on my quads right now. But if I put my leg down on the ground, it's gonna be like a bit less force. You can speed up if you have to, if you're in a rush, you know, you can do this as well. But like, yeah, <laughs> I feel like it's more beneficial if you just take it slow, you know? But it depends on the individual, I guess. Yeah, the hips is always tight, so hang about there for a bit. I should probably get like a yoga mat that's wider. The foam rolls kind of hang half off the edge right now and yeah, it's going to be a bit dirty. So you can also try to like bend your legs up while you do it, like this. Or you can also like keep it low as you do it. It's just different angles and like different parts of the muscle group, I guess. There's also the IT band which is here, from the knees to your hips. I personally avoid rolling the IT band because I feel like it's unnecessary and like I've had ITB syndrome before in the past and like I think when you roll it too much, it kind of weakens it over time. If your ITB feels tight, it's probably because your hips are tight or your glutes are tight. I just focus on rolling my hips and my glutes way more. And that's done well for me personally. But yeah, IT band, I just avoid or it's unnecessary for me personally. You guys can do it if you want and let me know how that goes. But yeah, at this point, I normally end it there, but you can also roll your back as well. If, if that's tight for you. For me, it's, it's, al it's almost never tight or I don't feel like much back pain or like that kind of stuff. But yeah, the only thing I would say is Avoid rolling directly on your spine, like so, so don't roll right on your spine, roll, roll on the sides of it, where there's muscle. You don't want to roll your joints directly, you don't, you don't, you don't want to roll your bones and like end up in the hospital or something, but just like roll your muscles. So don't, don't roll directly on the middle, roll the sides, so it makes sense. So like lean, lean on one side if you have to like this, but probably don't roll directly on the spine or directly in the middle, like, like that, like that's pretty uncomfortable, right? <laughs> I find that most of the time if your back is tight, it's probably because hips are tight or your glutes tight, something like that. It's almost never directly where you expect it to be. So yeah, I, I, I don't think I've rolled my back like since my gym days. <laughs> Ever since I took up running, I haven't really rolled my back. I've rolled my legs all the time, but definitely not my back. Yeah, we're on the top sides. Like, it's, see how it's on the muscle, rather than the bone itself. The upper back as well. Again, remember to lean onto one like one side if you can. Just don't go directly down the middle. 
I, I probably wouldn't do the neck at all. It seems kind of dangerous and un unnecessary. Like again, if you, if you have like a tight neck, it's probably something else. Probably like your back is tight or like your hips tight. It's I think a lot of it is always to do with sitting and like it's always tightness here that affects everything else below and above it. But yeah, other places to roll is also your triceps, I guess, if you, if you really have to. I normally have a ball for that, but yeah, I don't really know how to roll this on my triceps. It's like, it's probably like this or something. I don't know, it's kind of awkward. So it's sort of like the shoulders at this point and the triceps. Look, at this point, my front roll is done. I normally call day after I do my legs, but I do have one more thing I want to show you guys, and that's like. The massage ball. This is also one of my favorite parts of foam rolling. Well, it's not really foam rolling, but it's also part of self massage. So, yeah, get like a massage ball, you use tennis ball, like cross ball, massage ball, whatever. So you, just, you just like roll your feet over it. You know, slowly, fast, whatever you want to do, like side to side, back and forth, slowly, quickly. Just try to get all angles, right? And this always feels good because, like, you know, your, your, le your feet is always cramped in like running shoes or like walking shoes or whatever so yeah it's always good to like loosen up a bit and get some blood flowing there when you get a chance make sure you roll your arch and also like the outside of your foot too if you can and you can also use the massage ball to like roll on i guess it's like like this as well that's like really really painful that's like that's like levels above foam rolling but like i really do it if i need to probably get used to like foam rolling first and then see how it goes and if you really need to like get those like tighter knots or like deeper levels then you can also use like a massage ball for now i mostly use massage ball on my feet if you guys haven't done foam roll before definitely give it a try try to do it every day if you can it takes like 10 15 minutes or something if you can do it after running right like right after running even better i do it like late in the evening before my light stretching mobility work which i'll probably show you in another video i can't do it now because i gotta get back pretty soon i guess yeah um that's pretty much it for me that's all i gotta say for now uh thanks for watching and have a nice day bye